Hey, it's Matt, your average gamer, and this is the 20th build in our build a day until they announce DLC. That's right, we're doing a build or build related video every day until they announce DLC. So be sure to subscribe because there's going to be a ton of awesome content. In the meantime, today we're focusing on the Envoy's Longhorn and the ridiculous damage it can do. Now, I covered the bubble build once before, but it was with the Blasphemous Blade in a short combination video, and this was several months ago. So I wanted to honor it better, give it an entire video of its own, and show the ridiculous amount of damage it can do, certainly to some of the bigger bosses in the game. This is max scaling, by the way, currently Journey 16, and Blastidus X here gets absolutely shredded by the sheer amount of bubble damage, along with the posture damage it does, and it just rips through his HP. It's ridiculous. If you're having a hard time with Plastidusax, this is definitely one of the ways to go in there and completely destroy him with ease. It wasn't even difficult, as you can see there. Just a couple of hits of the Ash of War and the bubbles, and he absolutely gets destroyed by it. And it can work on other bosses too, like you're going to see on the Draconic Tree Sentinel here. It does a lot of damage to him as well. It builds up a little bit of posture damage throughout time, but the main selling point here is that the bubbles just do a ridiculous amount of damage and can be boosted generically by things like Golden Val and Halashabriri. I know the tougher Draconic Tree Sentinel here can give a lot of people a lot of trouble because of the fact that, relatively speaking, he is tough. However, the bubble build really absolutely annihilates him. He doesn't stand much of a chance. I've never had much difficulty using this build on him. If you're having trouble with him as well, he absolutely gets obliterated by it, takes posture damage, a little bit of knockback, and as you can see there, he went down extremely fast. The biggest selling point here, though, for me is any of the dragons in the game. If you're having any trouble with any of the large targets in the game, aside from Elden Beast, who obviously has that ridiculous amount of holy resistance that's not going to allow us to do a lot of damage, it shreds everything else that's a large target simply by the fact that all of the bubbles hit them, they're taking posture damage, and it just rips through their HP with ease. And we came up with a very, very good build for it at 150, where you can absolutely obliterate it ton of bosses in Elden Ring with ease, just basically focusing on faith because the Ash of War scales mainly with faith. We're not going for much with strength other than the minimum stats, but we'll go through equipment, stats, everything you need to know later in the video. But yeah, this is completely doable at 150. Very easy to do. Absolutely rages destruction, particularly on the dragons in the game, which absolutely get destroyed by it, as you can see there does insane levels of damage and makes the fights very easy. This fight was actually before I grabbed the Envoy's Crown. And by the way, the crown you can get at the Halleck Tree where you can also get the Envoy's Longhorn by the medium-sized marshmallow-looking enemies. There's also one in the capital before it turns to ash after the first sight of grace. There's a stretch of these smaller oracle-type enemies, and then there's a medium-sized one holding the Envoy's Longhorn. I believe it's a 4% drop rate, so the drop rate's not too bad. Most of the time, you're going to have to kill them a maximum of maybe 10 or 20 times. A lot of people get it within the first couple drops, though, because it's not a terrible drop rate. If you boost some of your arcane and stuff, you probably get that up to 6 or 8% and the drop rate becomes much, much more reasonable. And this truly is a Dragon Destroyer. If you're having any difficulty with any of them, don't worry. Even though I do get beat up a little bit here, this one can be a little bit frustrating with the ridiculous amount of frost buildup it has, like the Rot Dragon and Caleb with the Rot buildup. But even with that said, he goes down fairly quickly. They take massive damage to them. Again, they're getting hit with all of it, and it's just a ridiculous amount of damage for them. Another thing you can absolutely destroy with the bubble build because of the fact that we're using a pure holy build is the death fright birds. Yeah, this absolutely destroys them. This is one of the easier ones. I'm going to take on one of the tough ones here shortly. But yeah, if you're having any trouble with the death right birds, just don't worry about it as far as the bubble build goes. It'll absolutely destroy them for you because they're also large targets and they take additional holy damage and they go down very quickly to the bubbles. Even some more regular bosses can be a little bit tricky because it's not going to always hit all of them with the bubbles, but even so, as long as you're able to get it off, you're building up a little bit of posture damage while also doing a good amount of holy damage and hitting them even with the majority of the bubbles or part of the bubbles is enough to chew through a lot of bosses HP and it really is quite a powerful build. This is why I wanted to focus on this one a lot. I love this build. This is a build that I still use. It's so much fun to do and instead of a meme weapon, which you know obviously it originally was, it is actually a fantastic weapon in Elden Ring to use that works on probably about 80% of the bosses in the game, raging absolute destruction and ridiculous levels of damage on them. Keep in mind, by the way, the smaller bubble weapon isn't that great. The biggest 
bubble weapon isn't that great either. However, the one in the middle of the Envoy's Longhorn is absolutely fantastic. And you're going to see again here on one of the harder death right type birds that he's going to get completely obliterated by it as well because it does a ridiculous amount of damage to him. Though this one can be somewhat frustrating with all of the AoEs, in the end it's not going to matter because we're able to chew through his HP with the main goal of just making the fight as short as possible. Because of the amount of AoEs that they have and they can build up Frost and all that, generally speaking, you want these fights to be as short as they possibly could be, and the bubble build is certainly one of those ones where it's not going to be an exception. You'll absolutely destroy them with it. They take ridiculous levels of holy damage, as we mentioned, and he went down fairly fast after just two or three casts or uses of the Ash of War on the Envoy's Longhorn. But does it work on mobs? Well, it's okay for mobs. After all, it is the Envoy's Longhorn here we're talking about. It, it can obliterate some of the bosses in Elden Ring, and it's certainly overpowered for what it's used for. But as far as mobs go, it's just okay. It's decent against mobs. Tested at Gatefront. I messed around a while with the weapon art. It did a good amount of damage to them, but unfortunately with smaller targets, a lot of times the bubbles will miss or won't hit them, but when they do hit, they do do considerable damage, and you can clear out groups with it quite easily at a medium distance. But let's be real here, we, we didn't grab this weapon for mob control, we didn't grab this weapon for anything other than absolutely destroying some of the larger targets in the game with ease, and while using something that doesn't take a ridiculous level of buffing, because we're simply just using Golden Val and Halish Shabriri, and we're able to do ridiculous levels of damage, because we have a very good talisman set up and we're using the Holy Tier as well. Now let's get into equipment. For equipment, we have the Envoy's Longhorn plus 10, any seal will do. We have the Envoy Crown on, which boosts it by 15%, Ritual Swords Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Sacred Scorpion Charm for the Holy Boost, Dragon Crest, preferably the Great Shield, Holy Tier, and then we're using the Defense Tier, or you can use the Faith Tier if you need that as well. Now for stats at 150, we went for high faith because the weapon art scales almost purely with faith in that sense. So you're going to want as much faith as possible in the minimum strength requirements. I did mess one thing up here though. If I can go back and redo stats, I would go for 15 dexterity. That way, with just a change of talismans, I'd be able to use the blasphemous plate as well. And swapping between the two weapons gives you a wide variety that can cover pretty much every boss in Elden Ring. Now, since we're mainly faith, obviously, we're going to do buffs. The buffing is really simple. We're going to drink the Holy Tear first, and then we're going to end up casting Golden Vow because those are the two longest acting. And then we're going to use Halashabriri for another 25% generic damage boost. And then we get to use that awesome Bubble Ash of War after filling our FP back up. And we're able to do ridiculous levels of damage with that because it is one of the best holy weapons in the game, in my opinion, and it's a lot of fun to use, too. That is day 20 of our build a day or build related video every day until they announce DLC. I'm hoping they do for the anniversary. This has been so much fun so far. It's keeping my interest in this and I hope it's keeping everybody else's interest as well. This is a fantastic game. I truly love Elden Ring and this is one of the most fun weapons to use in it. So definitely give it a try. And once again, if you're not sub, definitely sub to this channel if you want to jump on board with all of this. And there's a ton of awesome builds on my channel. So be sure to check those out. Thanks for watching everybody and I will catch you guys there.